Hi, 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 Jakey Steve here, the long haired freaky dude. Today I'm reviewing Rhesus, theoretically by Euripides, translated into English by Edward P. Coleridge. This is yet another play concerning events revolving around the Iliad and the Odyssey. And in fact, if you've read the Iliad, this story should seem at least a little familiar to you. Because it's included in the Iliad! This is a great play about spies and espionage, as ancient and greasy as it might be. The play starts at nighttime in Hector's camp. Hector was the main dude on the Trojan side in the Trojan War. Hector looks over at the Achaeans' camp and notices that they have extinguished their fires. The only reason that he think they could be doing this is that they would be fleeing in their ships. After all the damage the Achaeans have caused to him, he wasn't about to let them get away that easily. He's about to send his armies over willy-nilly but at least someone's able to talk him out of it and at least first send a spy over to see if they actually are fleeing. And I think this here is especially interesting. So often in Greek literature we see people, leaders in particular, acting rashly, making decisions on the spot and making assumptions without much factual background. But here for a change we actually see a leader talked out of being stupid by acting on their unfounded assumptions. And they aren't talked out of it by someone higher or equal to them, no. They're actually talked out of it by someone lower than them, someone inferior. I just, I don't know, I just thought it was interesting. It doesn't happen much in Greek literature. Anyways, Hector asks if anyone wants to be the spy. A low-ranking guy named Dolon says that he will, but only on one condition. And ugh. If you've read Greek plays before, this repetitive theme will just drive you bonkers. But yes, here it is again. He wants a possession of Achilles. Though, it is a better request than Achilles' armor, Ajax. Not so worth killing yourself over for anyway. Ugh. What Dolon wants is Achilles' horses. And to be fair, they were broken and trained by Poseidon himself. So, that is kind of a cool request. See. Hector also wants Achilles' horses, but eventually he caves in and succumbs to Dolon's request. Oh man, and I just love, love Dolon's plan to infiltrate. Not because it's brilliant by any stretch of the imagination, but because it's so comically flawed. He puts on wolf skin and walks up to the camp, the Achaean camp, on all fours. He's trying to sneak in under the disguise of an animal. First off, these are hungry men in a foreign land. I think if they see what they think is gonna be an animal, they're gonna kill it. At least if they see a human, they might take them hostage. But an animal? Nom 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 nom. So, I think this was a poor strategy, and of course it was, because we never hear from him again. Shortly after Dolon leaves that night, one of the best charioters of the land, the King of Thrace, arrives. Just randomly, in the middle of the night, to help Hector. But better late than never, right? And this guy's name is Rhesus, by the way, you know, it's the, the, the title of the play suggests. Once Rhesus gets the chance to fight, aka the coming morning, he will just absolutely slaughter the Achaeans. <laughs> Meanwhile, Odysseus and Diomedes, in a very, very comical fashion, tiptoe right into the Trojan camp to kill Hector. Tiptoe through the Trojans to kill Hector! But they make it to Hector's bed and he's not there! So, with the divine consultation of Athena, they are told to kill Rhesus. Almost too easily, they find the bed of Rhesus and kill him. Like that. He wasn't even there an hour. So the greatest charioteer in the world has been here only a few hours and he's already killed by the mischievousness of Odysseus. Fabulous. Better yet, they also get rid of the horses. In the scene right after they kill Rhesus, it's, it's like a cartoon, there's no other way to describe it. And these guards are just like frantically approaching knowing that Rhesus is dead. And they ask these two men, who they don't even know if they're Trojans, they ask which way the killers went. These guards, they ask Odysseus and Diomedes which way the killers went. So, Odysseus and Diomedes, they're like, uh, he, he went that way, you know? And the guards, they run off. Just, wow. If that really did happen, I feel sorry for Hector and the gullibility of his guards. Hey, look, that guy over there has gullible on his face. Anywho, Odysseus and Diomedes make it back home safe and sound. Odysseus really is a master of disguise, and this isn't his first time either. One time he snuck into the very city of Troy as a beggar. I just can't help but picture him looking like the creepy dude on the cover of uh, Jethro Tull's album, Aqualung. I mean, I suppose no one really knew what Odysseus' face looked like, so sneaking into Troy must have been, you know, 
Kind of easy. There were no photos back then. So it makes sense. But sneaking into an enemy encampment at night. Questionable indeed. But not quite as questionable as the Count of Monte Cristo's method of disguise. Puts on mustache. Completely different person. <gasps> Who is that guy 10 seconds ago? I don't know. I think he went that way. I don't know. It, it just blows my mind how a mustache just completely, you know, no one knows who you are. Not even your best friends or your worst enemies. Not even your mother knows who you are once you put on a fake mustache. It's quite incredible. People really should use this method of disguise more often. Anyways, at one point Diomedes says this of Odysseus. Thou art well versed in clever tricks and hast a ready wit. I don't know if that's an ancient Greek accent. I don't know, what does an ancient Greek accent sound like anyways? I don't know. I like this description of deception, as if it's something that one can be versed in. It gives people hope that they too can deceive one day. So the play ends with one of the injured charioteers thinking that Hector injured him so that he could get his horses. Hector's response to this is this. Never may such longing for horses seize me that I should slay my friends. Friends? but not necessarily people, are ranked higher in value than horses. I think what Hector says here is right, but is what Odysseus did wrong? I mean, he ultimately stole the horses, but did he rank the horses' lives higher than the man's? If Odysseus was doing this in his own defense, because these horses were the best in the world and posed a threat to his life, isn't he ultimately ranking his life and not the horse's life as more important than the charioteer's life? What do you think? So, Rhesus by Euripides question mark. It's a recap of some events from the Iliad. It's not a ground that we see too much touched upon by ancient Greek tragedy. And the cartoon-like ease at which the spy work and espionage is executed will be sure to make you laugh. At least slightly chuckle on the inside. Well, I'm Jakey Steve, the long-haired freaky dude. Thank you for watching this book review. If you want to see more great book reviews, cooking tutorials, or headbanging to classical music, then might I suggest checking out my channel and hitting the subscribe button below. If you like reading great works like this or other great works, then might I suggest taking the Great Books Challenge. I'm sure it is something you'd love to do. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. Feel free to start a discussion, and feel free to be as vulgar as you please. It is free speech down there. Well, I'm Jakey Steve, the long-haired freaky dude. El long-o-freaky-dude-o-steefo. Be sure to have a good day.